Hi, I'm Roger. Uh-oh, it looks like you might need a new internet service provider. I want to talk to you about Hortlink. It's... Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> 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 Where were we? Oh, right. Here's a poster board with a bunch of squiggles arranged in the general shape of where some of you live. The parts my nephew colored with a marker indicate areas with access to Hortlink's proprietary data snakes. At least that's what we claim because nobody has ever actually checked to see if my nephew is telling the truth, even if they did. Legally, we're allowed to claim entire zip codes served as long as one single house has access. You missed a spot? Great. Well, our competitors' much more talented nephews also draw fun maps of their own. And every year, we come together to present their work to negotiators and prove people living in the middle of these pixelated smallpox outbreaks have several choices of provider. In reality, the vast majority of the country is basically stuck choosing between a single monopolistic supplier or drawing their own deviant fan art in the dirt with a stick. Wow. That's a lot of coverage. And if you are so lucky to live within the borders of one of our feudal cyber realms, you can rest easy in the knowledge that companies like Hortlink are the reason America now has the 31st best download and the 42nd best upload speeds in the world. Yeah, we may be getting edged out by powerhouse countries like Uruguay and Belarus, but we've got them all beat in price. As in, we're several times more expensive. Suck on that, Estonia. Never heard of those countries? Feel free to look them up. But you should know, Hortlink takes about a month to load a Wikipedia page, so maybe read a book instead, loser. Not again! Did that last part make you feel a little dumb? Would it help you to know that while statistically kids from lower income families have always been a bit behind their richer peers in school, our Machiavellian business model has forced that gap wider than ever. Thanks to months of forced remote learning that is literally impossible without our product, we may have ruined the lives and future earnings of millions. And before your city gets clever and tries to pass some mandate ensuring this truly vital service is accessible at a price all families can afford, be warned, we will absolutely sue. Hell, we'll choke an orphan in the street if it means we can charge his corpse $300 a month for four megabit download. But hey, maybe we'll feel charitable one day and run a Hortlink line to a poor's address. It's really no sweat off my back. I can make money in other ways. Maybe I'll force them to lease my special magic router box for a monthly fee. Maybe I'll exclusively service their area with cut-rate freelance contractor repairmen who are so slow and useless, they're essentially a living, breathing metaphor for our product. Maybe we'll get especially devious and institute data caps so the servers don't get overloaded, even though that's essentially an impossible scenario. Or maybe we'll just sell your data without your consent. Trust me, it's much, much hotter that way. Speaking of things that are hot, nothing gets my fibers cooking like watching out-of-touch lawmakers who spend their evenings searching for casserole recipes on their calculators try to understand net neutrality and how it works. We haven't done anything too crazy yet. But I wake up pretty much every night in a soaked bed after dreaming up new ways I could transform the internet into a convoluted nightmare morass of paywalls and throttled speeds. <laughs> I've been Roger, by the way. There you are, you little orphan. I've got a great deal for you. <laughs> Have you heard of the internet?